Hello, hello folks. Old Twit Talks Cars. I hope you're well and enjoying this rather stormy weather. Certainly been hot. Anyway, let's get into this. This is episode four. Can you believe it? Episode four of Old Twit's pre-classic predictions. So this is where I look at cars that are available today for not a lot of money that I believe are going to go up in value in the short to medium term. This is a using a bit of science um, to predict values of cars that I think are a bit fun and available today. So just to remind you very quickly, here's the criteria that we use for this and here's some previous incarnations of this um, little series if you haven't seen any. So take a look at those and also take a squeeze at the criteria in case you've not seen them before. So without further ado, today's little car um, is a British sort of British incarnation. So episode one was a was a Peugeot. So France is represented. Episode two was a Fiat. So that's Italy. Last week's episode was a Polo. So that's Germany. So to keep our everyone in Europe happy, we're doing a sort of British car, and that sort of British car is the Rover Two One Six Cabrio. So without further ado, should we jump into it? The Rover R8 200, sometimes referred to as the Mark II Rover 200, was launched in October 89. The R8 200 was the first car to be introduced by the newly privatised Rover Group. Once again, like its predecessor, the SD3, the model was designed in collaboration with Honda, who produced the new Designed for Europe Concerto model, and both models would share production lines at Rover's Long Bridge facility. The 200 and the Concerto itself were based on the fourth generation Honda Civic, of which the three door hatchback, Coupe CRX, and saloon versions were sold in the UK, meaning that Honda had effectively two different saloon models of the same car in the same class, which is a bit unusual. The 200 also saw the introduction of Rover's brand new K series family of engines, appearing in 1.4 and 1.6 litre versions. On its launch, the R8 200 was one of the few new designs in the small family car class. For instance, Ford's Escort had been around since 1980, and Vauxhall's Astra was unchanged from its 1984 launch. Indeed, the only major European competitors that had been around for less than five years were Peugeot's 309, the Renault 19 and the Fiat Tipo. However, the Escort, Astra and Golf had all been replaced by the start of 1992. By 1992, a cabriolet and a three-door hatchback version were available. The 1.6-litre engine, which would be my pick, a great little engine, I've had a 216 with one of those in, and it's uh, eager and revvy, gave 111 brake horsepower. The cabriolet was launched in two trim levels, the standard spec and the SE version. A version with a stepless CVT gearbox, best avoided, uh, was also launched, but these are pretty rare and as you will see from the how many left, they are really very rare. The 200 Cabriolet, like the Tura and Coupe models, finally met its maker in 1999, courtesy of BMW's steely-eyed rationalisation of Rover models. The hood on the Cabriolet in a standard model is manual and electric in the SE, but neither version is particularly slick. Likewise, the fascia and it's very beige and very Honda. Little of this will matter if you buy the Rover for the long term. It was never a particularly modern or trendy car in the first place. Performance is fairly impressive from the 1.6 litre engine, hauling this fairly heavy car to 60 miles an hour in about 9.6 seconds. Issues are few really. Cam belts really need doing every 50k and oil changes really are recommended every 5,000 miles, which are very short intervals by modern standards. Other than that, rusty sills and wheel arches are the main gripe, along with any car of this age that's been run on UK's salty roads. So here we are, here we are in howmanyleft.co.uk. And as you can see, I've put Rover 216 in the search bar and handily for us, 
the top four all appear to be the cabrios that we're interested in so at launch the cabrios came in two iterations of trim so the basic one which i think is just this one that says 216 cabrio so we've got a manual and an auto and the se which was a slightly posher version again manual and auto so you'll see across those four different iterations of car we've got 300 cars quite amazingly for the 216 se auto which was a cvt sort of stepless horrible automatic thing there's only actually one left and actually if you go into that and think oh there's a thousand on sawn there's actually none on sawn and one car left so cars don't come much rarer than that in the UK today for sure so that's going to score pretty well in terms of the most prolific one that's still available which is the base 216 Cabrio is there a load on Sawn? yeah quite a lot 580 so this is 2019 quarter four you've got 580 on Sawn and 228 registered for, for road use so that's a lot will they ever come back onto the market who knows it's probably unlikely at this stage put rover 216 cabriolet into ebay and actually there's no cars currently for sale which is fine because we always look at the sold ones anyway because that's where the uh, hard data is so if i shoot down there and click sold items now i saw this car earlier actually when it was still live and it was about 580 now it's quite interesting in some ways so it's sold now for 620 there was four bids sold today now i just wanted to show you this because it is slightly flabbergasting i mean quite an interesting car in some ways but my god could you not throw in a sponge at it if you wanted to sell it? It'd be nice to do a test, wouldn't it? And go, we're going to actually detail that and give it a cl proper clean. Clear off the bird shank uh, and see what difference that makes to the bids. I bet you it at would have added at least two or three hundred quid to that car. Look, absolutely filthy. But what I want to show you about this car is the this is a leather trimmed one little bit of wear there but that's quite normal for most cars but look at the look at the seats on these are beautiful so the leather trim if you can get leather trim in these it's well worth having because i think they're really nice seats and the backs i would say are even better i mean look at that apart from the absolutely mingingly horrible rear door cards which would almost certainly clean up nicely that's a lovely little interior so i would say if you can get leather one go for it just quickly i mean it's a bit of a wreck in places this one clearly the hood's not brilliant it's just so filthy i think it would clean up not a great color um clearly but i think it would clear up clean up nicely the interior i think's got loads of potential um and a great little car now if i remember i don't think this one had an mot so it's low mileage for its year 63,000 um hawaiian blue oh no i'm confusing it no however this will increase a little bit this mileage while i enjoy the nice weather so it's obviously being used at the moment but it why doesn't why don't they clean it owned this car for five years and enjoyed every minute six previous owners on v5 now to be honest i've got a peugeot 306 cabriolet and that's got six previous owners i don't think it's unusual for a cabriolet because people get fed up with them in the winter and move them on when not in use put a car cover on it oh, i can't believe it what i'm reading mechanically excellent i put a spare battery on turn the key firing up immediately running perfectly on the 20 mile round trip journey so there's lots and lots of spiel so it just fascinates me that this person could put all this information about a car which has got mot to the end of july and seems to be only used in the summer and is covered up it's got two keys and remote fobs is covered up with a breathable cover and yet presents it like that for sale yeah but anyway flabbergasting so anyway that's a nice little number that 216 cabrio 1999 so that's the very last year that these were um, in iteration hence the leather which i think probably wasn't available on the earlier versions uh 63 000 miles apparently carefully looked after uh running great mot till the end of next month 620 quid now you can't surely argue with that given we've seen how rare these are they can only go one way can't they here it is so this one i would say would be more typical 
of the mark. So let's have a quick look at this. So this one is um, been sold in the last three months or so, 14 bids, so quite a lot of interest. £1,200 this went for, much better colour, much better looked after. It's got unpleasant um, aftermarket alloys on which aren't great and it's got really horrible profile tyres. So I personally would sort that out. Uh, from the front they look like the 800, so this will be the facelifted version I believe from 96 onwards where they had a common sort of front end with the 800 series nice clear back window hood looks clean looks nice and straight i can't take my eyes off those wheels may have had a bit of a aftermarket spray up on the sills they do suffer there this is an earlier car so this is more typical of the interior that you're going to get which is a sort of velour and well it is velour really two-tone velour um again nice seats i don't mind them at all it's very much of its period dash is very honda early 90s honda which is what it is so um, you know that's what you should expect but looks tidy enough the only thing like again i know i fixate on these things but look I mean that a new gator for that I would think would be 10 quid on eBay and to me attention to detail and these things is everything um, you've got a rubber band around there please come on so let's have a quick look at the blurb on this one 48,000 miles these these cars don't get used a lot they're not a car that you cruise to the, the um, boot of Italy in or um, you know the length of the UK they are a pottering about car which is fine so often they are low mileage 206 cabrio 1.6 manual so this has got the 111 horsepower k-series engine apparently verified mileage and i would believe that runs very nicely very very good so you know i think that's a typical car it's a decent little car for 1200 quid put some different wheels and tires on there sort out your gator you're probably home and hosed and that's a nice little number so i think you know spend three or four hundred quid on it and i think you've got a nice appreciating little classic you have seen by now that the cars that I'm recommending to you aren't really the glory cars necessarily. What I'm about is trying to identify for you and for us cars that I think potentially will make you money, which let's let's be honest, is quite unusual for cars. Normally they cost you a fortune over time. So uh, I think this little car's got a lot going for it. Is it glamorous? No. Is there something of the church fate about it? Yes. Would you expect your vicar to be driving around in one with a basket of bread on the passenger seat probably but that doesn't detract from the fact that they're as cheap as chips at the moment and if you can get a decent one or even a bit of a ropey one and do a little bit of work on it it won't cost you a lot so I'm a big fan so let's jump into the scoring on these car because I suspect it's going to do pretty well. So our first criteria is value and as you've seen we can easily get the cars that we want in the values that we want. The ones that are available are certainly attainable. 1200 quid, the uh, most expensive one we saw down to about seven or 800 quid. So for cost I'm going to give this car an 8. In terms of mileage, I think by definition they're going to be low mileage car. They're not a um, continent crosser. You're not going to tear on down to the boot of Italy in one of these. So they're going to be pottering about locally. Just the nature of the thing. So I think they, uh, as you've seen, the highest one I think was 63,000 miles down to about 40,000 miles, which is amazing considering the age of these cars. Um, so very likely to be good on mileage. So for mileage, I'm going to give them a nine. Rarity, well, we've had a look at that. I mean, there was only one of a certain model, wasn't there, of the Auto SE. Uh, I would avoid that Auto box, it's not good. However, one car, none on Sawn, pretty rare. I think the entry level Cabriolet was, what was it, a couple of hundred cars? So this is a pretty rare car and it's only gonna get more rare. So rarity, it can only be a nine.
So plus factor, well it's not going to tear your face off, it's not going to blow wind up your nighty, it's not that type of car. However, it's got a nice interior, particularly with the leather, I think the seats are good, you've got a drop top, and this time of year what more could you want is perfect. Uh, so I think there are some nice little plus factors there, however, they're not the maybe the most compelling, so I'm going to give this car a, a 6 for plus factor. In terms of usability, well, I think they're a practical enough car for a, a drop top. I think you get four people in there easily enough, maybe not for long distances, but four all the same. You've got a good boot, um, you can potter around town, you know, it's a relatively small engine, so I think your fuel economy is going to be decent. You know, the tax is relatively cheap, your insurance is relatively cheap, so I think the usability of this car can only have a seven. Well, our overall total is a very impressive 39 and I think this car earns its place in this series very well. So if you've enjoyed this and you'd like to see more, there's a video coming every week, I normally do one at the weekends, so please subscribe, give me a thumbs up if you think it's appropriate, don't bother if it's one of those because I'll just take it as red and I hope to see you again next week.